Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and today we turn the big 3-0 on this episode of I Create Content. Hey, it's Friday. Appreciate you tuning in to today's show. Thanks for wrapping up the week with me. If you caught Wednesday's episode, we were taking a look at Photoshop, specifically how to create graphic watermarks for use in Adobe Lightroom. Before I jump into today's tip, tomorrow I'll be presenting for the North Texas PC Users Group. You can find them online at ntpcug.org. Sometimes community is large-scale presentations and auditoriums packed full of people, but as an Adobe community professional, I'll tell you that sometimes community is in your own backyard. So if you're local in the area, come and support these guys. Hey, check out their user group. I'll be there presenting on Photoshop, specifically how to create graphics for print and for web. Right? My presentation's at 10 a.m., so if you're local, I hope to see you there. Today's video is going to be on Adobe Illustrator. Last week's video was a big hit, so I've got some new tools to show you. Let's go ahead and jump in. Before I jump into that great tool, we're going to go old school. As many of you know, the Pathfinder panel is a great way to combine shapes together, subtract from shapes, do the intersection, or even exclude certain areas. You can also use live paint groups found under the object menu as a quick way to color objects. So if I use the live paint bucket, I can very quickly and effectively color items on the screen. The tool that I'm going to demonstrate for you today is the Shape Builder tool. This is new to CS5, and it seems to combine the best elements of both the Pathfinder and Live Paint groups. I'll change my document, and the first thing I need to do is just select some items on the screen. So here I have all these selected shapes. You can see where their paths intersect and overlap. And if we take a look on the toolbar, the Live Paint group is over to the left you can see that the keyboard shortcut is Shift-M. Now when I drag it out to the artboard, you'll notice that I have the ability to select different colors. This kind of looks like the live paint bucket. If you don't see that on your screen, you need to turn the option on. So what you'll do is double click the live paint icon, or excuse me, the shape builder icon, and double clicking the shape builder icon brings up its options you want to make sure you check the box that says Cursor Swatch Preview. So once that's checked, you will see the preview just like it's the live paint bucket. Now, what I can do with this tool is actually go through, and as I hover, you'll see mesh patterns where not only can I color, but I can combine or attach shapes together. So if I drag this way across the star in the circle, those areas are meshed, they'll be combined into a single area. Notice that I colored it green. If I want to delete an area, I can hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, and as I drag across and it meshes out, it will delete that portion. I can turn around and add new items together, or I can delete other sections just by dragging across with the Option key. And in fact, it's really easy to drag across, combine different areas together, or even knock certain areas out. So there you have it, a real quick demo of the Shape Builder tool. Let me show you a quick way with the Shape Builder to make a series of rings. I'll flip my screen again, go to a different document, I'm going to change to the Move tool, or excuse me, the Selection tool, and by holding the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, I can drag out a duplicate of this ring. So I'll go ahead and drag out a duplicate, hey, and I'll position it like so. I'll grab both of these, Again, hold the Alt or Option key, drag across, and I'll just quickly make some overlapping rings. Now, they don't really look like they're intertwining, hey, or that they're intersecting with one another. Look at how quickly I can combine these with the Shape Builder tool. Once again, that's Shift-M to do the Shape Builder. They need to be all selected first. That's a key thing. The objects have to be selected on the screen first. Once they're selected, now I can see the Shape Builder is active. I'm going to change the color to red, 
And watch how quickly I can just drag across, and I'm actually going to make this interweave. So that's going over and under. This will go over. It's going under that way. This will go over. That's going under. Over and done. That's over and under. If I click away, look at the screen, very quickly I've got some intersecting rings all by using the Shape Builder to not only intersect the paths and combine them together, but to even color just like a live paint group. So my name's AJ Wood. If you appreciate the video, please give it a thumbs up. Always appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel. Remember, the videos are made for you, so if you want to get your questions answered, leave me comments and questions on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+. Leave comments on the YouTube channel or my blog, ajwood.com. Have a happy Friday, an excellent weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.